Okay, that's hard to follow. I feel like we all need to like do some jumping jacks or tell some jokes or something. Just thank you, doctor. That was great, but holy heaviness. Okay, so I'm going to try to just lighten the mood a little bit. Um, I'm Dr. Heather Smith. I, my husband and I, he's in the back. Dr. Marley, raise your hand. Uh, we open Live and Well Family Chiropractic. We actually just celebrated our 11th anniversary this week, so it's been 11 years. And we have Dr. Chris in the back, raise your hand. He's one of our docs. And then uh, doctors, student doctors, Max and Megan, are our two students that we're working with right now and mentoring them. So I'm so happy to have all of them in the room. Um, let's see here. I'm going to move, move on here. So we love doing stuff like this. In fact, prior to 2020, we did this stuff all the time. So we either held our own workshops and filled rooms, or we got asked to go speak in front of crowds. And it was one of our favorite things to do. It was one of our best ways to spread truth and our mission. And then the world shut down and that stopped, right? So thank you for having me back. And I actually want to give a big shout out to all the providers here because it's a Saturday and these people are in this room. Dr. Nate? drove up from Loveland. I mean, we have these, these this, I think we should give a big round of applause to the providers in here. And then obviously a huge shout out to the YPOFs board and um, especially to Lilia for asking me to be here. It's kind of last minute and I did my best to prepare something for you guys, but I'm truly honored to be up here. So a little bit about me. I feel like I get the best out of a message when I know the messenger just a little bit. So I'm gonna take a couple minutes and just tell you guys who I am. So I have my, I call them my five Fs. These are my core values in my personal life. Um, if you guys haven't set core values in your lives, I encourage you to go do it today. Go home, talk to your spouse, your best friend, figure out what you filter everything through in your life and write those words down and memorize them. For me, it's easy because they all start with F. Faith, number one, family, number two, freedom, number three, fitness and fun. So everything that I do in my life, both personal and honestly professional, go through these filters. More about me. Uh, those are Dr. Marley and I's girls. Their names are Nora and Quinn. Many of you know them. They're 10 and eight. And as any parent or grandparent in the room, you guys know that having a child, they're your purpose for everything. They're God's greatest blessing in our lives. And they're the reason that honestly, we do everything we do here in the Cheyenne community to reach more people and enhance the health of our community. Um, over here on the left, that's my live and well crew. So like most of them are in the room, but then we have three staff as well. Miranda, Jill, and Brinley. They're amazing. Um, we strive to deliver what we call the cell phone test for everybody that comes in our practice. We want them to come in their first visit, have an amazing experience and leave, get in their phone, pull out, excuse me, get in their car, pull out their cell phone and call somebody they know and say, have you been to live and well? They just treat people amazing there. And we capture that from people all the time that our desk gals are the best. They always greet you with a smile. And so it's just a very, we, we truly believe that healing begins when people walk through our doors. So a lot of us are up here talking about 2020 and beyond, right? I want to share with you guys a little bit about us is that prior to COVID, prior to the pandemic, our message was the same as it is now. Like COVID didn't change us. It didn't change us during. We didn't change at all. In fact, we grew more steadfast in the principles that we know about health. Um, didn't change who we are. Didn't change how we practice. Um, and really, I think that if we want to have a good, strong immune system, it starts obviously preconception, right? We need to make sure that we are as healthy as we can be, mamas, women in the room, so that when we are pregnant, we have the best chance at giving that baby uh, the most optimal functioning life. So more about me and Dr. Marley, we actually had both of our babies at home, planned home births, vaginal deliveries with midwife, I believe that was the best way for my family. Do I believe that's best for everybody? No, um, but it was exactly what we wanted. I wanted a calm environment with not a lot of lights, a lot of loud noises, all the things, natural environment. And they were born um, obviously vaginally with no intervention. And I believe that that right there is how we start our future generation on a healthier path, especially with their immune system. Vaginal deliveries are paramount to building a proper um, microbiome. 
Then you can see little Nora Jean is breastfeeding her infant dolly, right? And I didn't tell her to do that, but I had to pick, take a picture of it because clearly she saw me doing that with her sister. So I think that just speaks volume is to our children are always watching us and they're modeling us. So we need to make sure that we're living a life that we want our future generation to live as well. And if you guys can't tell, I'm super passionate about pediatrics and pregnancy, and I give a whole class on just that. So I'm going to try not to talk too much about that. Um, but I think it's important to know that God did not make a mistake in our design, right? And we need to trust that. We need to trust that natural immunity trumps artificial immunity. We need to not be afraid of our children entering the world and taking them to grocery stores and putting things in their mouth to experience the world and get micro exposure to germs and when babies crawl and then they sit down and suck their thumbs. I mean, the things that they do are their innate intelligent design and we seem to always want to over sanitize things or don't touch that or don't put that in your mouth. And in our clinic, if anyone's been in there, we're not that way at all. In fact, we don't use any harsh chemicals and we really like to provide an environment where kids can be kids. Um, I think that's all I have on that, actually. <clears throat> so I ran across many of you guys in the years of the fight. And that's Nora over there on the left. Um, I think COVID really made me a mama bear when I didn't know I was one. So let me tell you, in 2019, excuse me, 2020, when the world shut down and they closed schools, my kids were in pre-K and um, first grade. And that was the hardest year on our family that I can ever, I just never wanna, I don't, I think I've blocked it out. You know, my kids are social butterflies and they were forced to stay away from friends. Even though we weren't afraid, everyone we knew basically was afraid. We were essential healthcare workers, amen. So we were in the clinic serving patients more than we, more patients then than we ever had before. And we had to figure out a way to get our kids homeschooled and, God bless my mom for doing it all for us, but it was unfair for her. It was unfair for them. We had a, you know, mental health stuff in Nora that I'd never seen and never hoped to see again. She was crumbling. And so when the next year rolled up and they said, kids can go back to school, but this, this, and this, right? So it's the temperature as you're walking in with the little gun. It's masked at all times, recess included, PE included, music. When they go to the restroom and wipe their bottoms, masks still had to be on. Um, and then hand sanitizer. And I mean, I sat down, Dr. Marley, and we said, do you, what do you girls wanna do? It's, you guys missed school all last year, do you wanna go back? And it was a resounding yes, we wanna be in school. So we put them in that year and it was horrific. Um, and we did it for as long as we could. And then when the governor released the mask mandate for adults, but kept it for children, that's when I really reared up. So most of you I met when I started this mask petition here for our kiddos. Um, and really it just was, it was time to get them out of masks when we could get everybody else out of masks, in my opinion. And we did, we got 1,300 signatures in a matter of weeks. I was told if we could get 1,000, we should be able to get the school board to flip the vote. And we did for the last three days of school that year, our kids and teachers got to be mask free, woo! Um, but it lasted three days. So the next year, I was very involved with the school board, watching all their meetings through the summer. Where's your smart start plan? Give it to us. We wanna make sure we're gonna send our kids back. And two weeks before is when we finally heard they were gonna do basically the same thing, which is when I pulled my kids from the district. And we put them in a private school for that year and it was amazing. They got to be kids, they were in a safe environment. They got to be around like-minded people. And at that point, honestly, you guys, I was burnt out. I was fatigued of the fight. It was exhausting. There was so much negativity. Yes, a ton of positivity that we received, but I think I just had battle fatigue, and so I just kind of curled up in my ball, and I was like, I'm gonna protect my tribe, my people. I'm done going out there speaking truth to the masses, so this is really, truly my first time back in front of a big crowd, so thank you for having me. <laughs> okay, so my goal of today is to give you guys some tips and tricks when it comes to some important things um, that I think can keep us healthy and strong. But before we get there, I think we've all agreed today, we're, we're in a healthcare crisis. It's not getting better. It's, it hasn't gotten better since 2020. I know I'm probably speaking to the choir, but you guys can then go out and tell your friends about these things that you're, you're hearing from all these doctors. So there's four reasons. I believe the first one is we have the wrong definition or belief system 
regarding health and honestly massive confusion on who to listen to, which I think is phenomenal that YPOFs put this group of powerhouse people together that we can all speak in our lane and tell you how we can help you achieve better health. Um, we have a lack of personal responsibility that I think the doctors before the lunch break nailed on the head. We procrastinate when it comes to our own health. And then finally, I believe that we live in such fear of acute illness that we live a chronically bad lifestyle, right? So a lot of people in these years where they were afraid, they started eating like crap, they stopped moving their bodies, their emotional, social well-beings went down, and all of those things that we do for fear of a temporary acute illness leads to chronic lifestyle disease, in my opinion. So since 2020, I'm sorry guys, I don't think you guys can see that, but the question is basically, have we, have we, have a country, have we as a country gotten healthy and stronger or sicker and weaker? So ultimately, are we taking, oh, I have a screen here, love that. Okay, um, <laughs> are we taking more or less prescription meds? More. Are we taking more or less, or excuse me, are we having more or less mental health problems? Correct. And then ultimately, does health really come from a bottle? So Dr. Max likes to say, the medicine cabinet, if it's full, are you healthy? Right? We want our med medicine cabinet to be empty. All right? And truly, what this really comes down to is what's happened to our quality of life. When all of this stuff changes, when we get more m meds, more mental health problems, our quality of life tanks, and as we all know, the life expect expectancy has gone down. I think for the first time in how however many years, our little ones aren't supposed to live as old as we do, as old as um, the generations before us. And I don't think any of us should be okay with that. So the reality check here <clears throat> is I'm just gonna be real. As much as I wanna tell you all the things to do to avoid getting sick, it's just truly, honestly, part of life once in a while. We, are, we just, we do sick once in a while. I don't think we get sick, I don't think we catch things. I think it's the terrain theory that Dr. Stacy was talking about. But we like to preach, hey, listen, this, these invisible viruses and bacteria, they're around us. So what you need to do is keep your body as healthy and as strong as possible so that when, not if, when you come in, count, in, in contact with these things, um, you have a better chance at not only surviving through them, but keeping yourself out of the hospital with them as well. So as much as I'm gonna share with you tips and tricks to stay healthy, truth is sometimes being healthy is doing sick once in a while, getting a good immune response, getting some good um, innate immunity and letting your body heal itself. <clears throat> All right, oh, also, we have like, we did 30 days to a healthy host, like in 2020 when everybody was freaking out about the virus and we were like, how about let's talk about the host? So if anybody wants that, it's on our YouTube video, uh, channel. You just look up Live and Well Family Chiropractic YouTube and we recorded 30 straight days of ways to make yourselves healthier and stronger. I encourage you guys to go look those up. So our major premise at Live and Well is pretty much five things. We believe the body is a self-healing, self-regulating organism. We believe the nerve system is the master controller of the body. When there's interference to the nervous system, the body can no longer heal, um, heal and adapt appropriately. Misalignments or subluxations within the spine irritate and cause interference within that nervous system. And our job as chiropractors is to detect the misalignments, subluxation, and correct them, remove the nerve interference, and allow the body to heal. So number one, we're gonna talk about some food stuff. Not growing your own, but thank you, Dr. Nate. That was, I'm ready to like go start my garden tomorrow, so thank you for that. Um, so we always joke, eat like, eat, eat like your life depends on it, because it does, right? So in a nutshell, we have like five different workshops that we put on around food, so I try to just condense all of that stuff into one slide for today. Just encourage people to eat unlimited veggies, especially if you grow your own, and there's no roundup on them. Um, healthy fats are encouraged, things like coconuts, coconut oil, avocado oil, ghee, good butter, um, staying away from you know, partially hydrogenated oils. We need to, those are highly, highly inflammatory in the body, so things like soybean oil, um, corn, uh, they call it vegetable oil, but it's really just toxic. Uh, plenty of natural meats, fish and eggs, and then some fruit, nuts, and seeds, but like Dr. Paulus was saying, not peanuts. We wanna eat real nuts. Um, I'd like to encourage you guys, your life doesn't get better by chance, it gets better by change, and we feel like when it comes to food, um, 
Willpower is sometimes not strong enough, right? Out of sight, out of mind is really what you need to focus on. So make sure you need to change at the cash register. Like try not to bring the, we call it garbage, C-A-R-B-A-G-E instead of garbage. Try not to bring that stuff in your house because when it's there and it's looking at you and you're starving, willpower some, sometimes isn't strong enough. So more preparation I think is a great idea. Some things that I always teach people about is, um, you know, smoothie packs for the morning, especially for on the go people who are still working. You throw all your stuff in like a Ziploc pouch for the week, five Ziploc pouches and throw that in the blender in the morning, add your liquid, hit go, and you're ready for the morning. So there are things that you can do to make it more convenient to eat healthy, but if it was easy, we'd all be super healthy. Am I right? So we've got to put in a little bit of extra work when it comes to food. I'd be happy to answer some more questions about that after. Do's and don'ts, um, obviously, do's, non-starchy veggies. I'm just gonna read these because I don't think you guys can read. Some fruits, we talked about meat, poultry, fish, uh, range-fed eggs, natural fats, nuts and seeds, and lots and lots of water. Does anybody know how much water you're supposed to drink a day? A lot, that's it. <laughs> yes, go ahead. A half an ounce per body weight. Good job, half an ounce per body weight, okay? So remember that the next time you're thinking you drink a lot of water, but you really only had like a glass before work and a glass when you got home. Um, don'ts, refined carbohydrates, grains, a lot of cereal grains, these sweeteners, uh, the veggie oils, vegetable oils, which are really just rancid, terrible, inflammatory oils. A lot of dairy products, especially the ones we buy from the store, um, are not healthy for us. Different if you grow your own. And um, that's a whole different ball, ball game when we're talking raw milk versus Kroger. Uh, and then we need to really refrain from soda, juice, and alcohol if you want to live your healthiest life. <clears throat> That's our puppy, Chief. Um, anyone who's been to the clinic meets Chief because he comes every single day. He's now, he turns two this month, so this was a little bit of a, like two years ago picture, but we just love him. And um, I think some of our patients come just for Chief, honestly. But better uh, practices to better sleep. So I did a ton of research on sleep and again, have a sleep workshop. So I tried to pull just my best takeaways on sleep. I think sleep is like a lot of our, um, what, like Achilles heel. Like people go, 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 and don't allow their body to rest and to sleep. And if we wanna be healthy, and if we're even starting to start to do sick, or even when we're feeling great, we need to prioritize sleep. So when it comes to that, Think about it, you guys, we spend a third of our lives on our mattresses and our pillows, so invest in yourself when it comes to having a really good mattress and a really good pillow. Can give you guys some feedback on that in a little bit. When it comes to sleep, we need to really try our best to have a sleep routine. So people who work, right, it's like through the week, Monday through Friday, we tend to go to bed at a good time, wake up at a good time, and then we wreck it all on the weekends. And really, what the research supports is that we should try to keep a good, healthy sleep routine seven days a week. Um, E-fast or electronic fast at least an hour before bedtime. So the re research used to say 30 minutes, but nowadays it's just, it's overwhelming how much research is out there about this, the blue light that comes off of those suckers and it just wakes up your brain. So everybody always asks, what about, can I read my Kindle at bed? I have like the blue light blocker screen on it, but it's not good enough. Um, it might make your eyeballs feel tired, but what the research is showing is even if you read on a screen before bed, in bed, your brain is still awake, very much awake, and you have more up, down, like awake cycles in the night. So really encourage reading before bed, but I encourage the old school book, okay? Um, create a sleep sanctuary. So when people come to my clinic and they're like, their biggest goal is I want better sleep, we talk about what their bedroom's like. So is it dark? Are we talking pitch black? It needs to be like a cave in there. We don't want lights coming through. We don't want night lights. Um, it needs to be very much, you think like a primal cave, okay? It needs to be cool. The best sleep, uh, the best temperature to keep your bedroom at for good sleep is under 67 degrees, actually. So that means if you need some warm, cozy blankies that are fuzzy and keep you warm, go for it. But the actual temperature of the room should be cooler. Um, all adults in the room, but I always joke, don't confuse your brain either in a bedroom. Like when you walk in the kitchen, Max, what are you expecting? Food. When you walk in the bathroom, Dr. Chris, what are you expecting? Okay. When, <laughs> when you walk in your bedroom, what should you be expecting? 
sleep and another S word, and that's about it, right? <laughs> okay? So, <laughs> truly, if we have our bedroom as our office, as our catch-all, as our, you know, our desk is in there, like, when you walk in your bedroom at night, your brain's like, what are we doing now? Is it time to work? Am I going to my desk? Am I, what, am I laying in my bed and doing all my notes from the night? Like, absolutely not. Make your bedroom for those two things, and you will get better sleep. Um, decreased caffeine consumption. So I pushed it like to noon. Most experts will say 2 p.m., but that is if you go to bed at 10 p.m. If you're a granny like me and go to bed at 8.30, you cannot drink caffeine that late, okay? So the half-life of caffeine, it stays in your body for something six hours. So when you drink a cup of coffee, six hours later, half the caffeine is still running through your system. So it's like the nappuccino idea, right? Where you chug some coffee and go to sleep, not a great idea. Um, so really knock down on that caffeine consumption. A lot of people think a nightcap is great for improved sleep, but the research is against that as well, sad to say. Um, if you drink alcohol before bed, some people think it just calms them down and they'll go to sleep, and maybe you fall asleep after a nightcap, but research shows you don't stay asleep well. Your heart rate's higher, your liver's working extra hard, so the running joke is if you wanna drink, day drink. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> okay, and then, um, <laughs> I told you guys I was trying to like make us laugh or I don't know. Um, of course, magnesium supplementation. I think Dr. Stacy talked about this too. I'm not gonna talk like strict dosages or anything like that because I don't have that research right now, but magnesium can be great for calming and for going to sleep. It's also great for bowel movements. Um, there's some magnesium lotions, some topical stuff for if kids have like restless legs at night and they just can't seem to calm down or if they have constantly waking their moms up because their legs hurt. So magnesium is just, I mean, you can take an Epsom salt bath. There's all sorts of ways, but magnesium is awesome to implement for better sleep. Uh, mindfulness, I don't think I probably need to talk to you group about this uh, very much, so we'll just kind of breeze through these. I encourage, like, mindfulness is very important if we want to be healthy. We have to, we cannot ignore our emotional state or our emotional health. So there's a couple things that I think everyone can implement one more thing maybe to improve their emotional health. One thing that I'm a big fan of is having a strict morning routine. So just starting your day off right. I think I had a mentor tell me once that the first five minutes and last five minutes of your day can really dictate your whole, the whole day. So just make sure you wake up with purpose and have a good routine. Obviously prayer, um, meditation, moving your body, whatever that looks like for you. It can be swimming, walking, CrossFit, hardcore exercise, however you can get your movement in. Uh, not only will that help with your mindfulness, but it also helps with your sleep and your health in general, lymphatic flow. Um, journaling is another one I think is phenomenal. I don't think enough people journal anymore. I love to journal and I love to reflect on my journal from past years. I think it's super powerful, especially if you set goals and want to determine where you are now versus where you want it to be. So I encourage you guys to journal. There's some fantastic prayer journals that have scripture at the bottom that are just the best way to start the day. Anybody know what box breathing is? Set the chiros in the back. Okay. All right. Do you want to come teach it, Dr. Marley? I'll let you. Okay. All right. So box breathing is just a way to really calm your nerves, right? So if you think of a box, a square box. So you're going to breathe in for how many seconds? Four. Everything's four. Okay. So everybody's going to just relax, get your legs down, get comfortable. And we're going to take a big belly breath in for four seconds. When you get all the way in, you're going to hold for four seconds, blow out for four, four, a count of four, and then rest for a count of four, another hold. So you're going to breathe in, hold, blow out, hold. You guys can try that as I'm talking, but don't fall asleep. It's really good for stressful times or for times that you just need to kind of ground yourself. And it's a great way to wake up. So maybe put some box breathing in in your morning routine. Um, does anybody need me to repeat that or you guys got the drift? Cool, okay. Social gatherings. I think that's one thing that was so massively overlooked when we were going through the years of separation was how important it is to have connection with humans and people that you love. Stress response. So that's you? Oh no. <laughs> Okay, we talked a little bit about stress. I think Dr. Nate did, or somebody did. Um, we got our stress response from our ancestors, right? I think he was talking about livestock. They have a high, high fight or flight response. 
I'm here to tell you so does humans, so do we. In fact, most of us live in chronic fight or flight. We never tap into our rest, repair, digest mode enough. They say something like 90 plus, 90% plus doctor's visits are due to, can be rooted and traced all the way back to stress. Um, and I think that what I really want you guys to understand is when we live a chronic fight or flight life, what's happening is we're, we're leading our, our own selves to chronic disease, okay? If you think about it, <clears throat> you're in a dark alley, you just locked your car, men go with me on this, and all of a sudden you hear a noise, right? And before you know it, somebody's chasing you. So we throw our purse or whatever and we start running, right? We're in fight or flight. When we're in that response, our blood pressure, does that go up or down? Up. Heart rate? Muscle tone? What about our sensory, like our, uh, our pupils, do they dilate? Yes. What do you think happens to our digestive system? Downregulated. We might poop our pants, but I mean, truly, we're, it's not going to be digesting food at that point. What about our reproductive system? Is it working well in fight or flight? It's shut down as well, right? What about our immune system? Are we really worried about producing new blood, uh, uh, white blood cells at that point in time? No, because we're in survival mode. Blood sugar mobilizes, right? We get as much blood sugar out so that we can go fight. Whether we fight or flee, we've got to be ready to basically save our life. Now, does, it, does living in a chronic state of that sound like health? No, sound like diabetes, heart disease, stroke, cancer, all these top leading causes of death. So if we live our life in a chronically fight or flight stressed out physiology, we, that right there is leading us into these chronic diseases that are the top killers in the nation. Okay? The cool thing about what I do and what we do in our clinic is the chiropractic adjustment has a way to pull you out of that fight or flight and get your nervous system calmed down. I think I have a video. Oh, maybe next. Um, Ultimately, stress, what we see, I mean, 90% of doctor visits are for stress, 90% of chiropractic visits are due to stress. People are stressed out more than they've ever been before. We have more stress in our life now than our ancestors had, and it's not gonna stop. So what we do is we, as chiropractors, detect uh, subluxation. I brought a thermography reading, if any of you guys wanna see that at a demonstration later. Um, the subluxation is a misalignment of the spine, of a joint space. Over time, that misalignment starts to irritate the nervous system. We have subluxation in the spine way before we even know that it's there, okay? Less than 10% of our nerves that exit the spine detect pain. The other 90% is simply for function. So we have to have enough nerve irritation for our body to feel that something's wrong. So typically by the time someone comes in our office, they've had this problem in their spine long before they ever knew it was there. That misalignment is a stressor or irritant to the spine. It can actually, it can, excuse me, to the brain, and it can invoke that stress response that we just talked about when you're running from the bear, okay? So we remove the stress on the spine, the spinal cord, the nervous system, and allow the body to enter a state of ease. And we can find subluxation in the neck, we can find it in the middle back, low back, pelvis, but when people come into our practice, uh, we have a very detailed examination to determine, do they have subluxation in their spine? Where is it? How long has it been there? And can we correct it? So when people come into Live and Well, there's no walk-in adjustments. You have to be an established patient, and we have to do a very detailed examination before we'll ever start adjusting your spine. <clears throat> I don't um, a couple things here uh, that I wanted to share with you as far as our new patient process. For those of you who are curious, we, on, on a patient's first visit, we do a series of objective tests. So we do a, a biostructural postural analysis that shows us, the, the posture is the window to the spine, so it gives us an idea of perhaps where some of those subluxations are in the spine. After that, we perform spinal thermography scans, which detect heat and inflammation, heat or inflammation, as the nerves exit your spine. Those scans actually pop up on a big screen TV for you to see yourself exactly where your hot spots are. It's powerful. And then after that, if we feel necessary, we do take full spinal x-rays in our clinic. We have um, invested in high frequency digital film that we process right there in the clinic. And then the patient after that leaves and the doctors get to work. We have a round table, we study the case, we look at the x-rays, determine if we can find the cause of what's going on in that person's, uh, with, with their symptomatology, bring them back in as soon as possible, a day or two later, show them what we found, and at that point would start giving them chiropractic care. 
We don't call it treatment. I hate that word in my clinic because we don't treat anything. What we're doing is removing the interference to the nervous system and letting the body heal itself. Do you have, um, does this thing have noise coming out of it? If this plays, I was gonna talk to you guys a little bit more about st stress and chiropractic and then I remembered that Dr. Marley filmed this awesome video a couple years ago, so I'm just gonna let you listen to him instead. It's been estimated that up to 90% of all doctor's visits are related to stress. We know that long-term stress in the body manifests as disease. Think about it, if you're always running from a tiger, the body will eventually break down. So what are you doing about your stress? Are you exercising regularly? Are you getting good quality sleep consistently? Do you meditate, journal, pray? If so, those are all great and all beneficial. There are many lifestyle strategies that you can use to mitigate your stress. However, there is one thing that most people don't do that can play the largest role in helping your body function at its best and adapt to life stressors. You see, if you want to function and feel your best, your body must respond readily and appropriately to all of life stressors. And the way that you do this is through a properly functioning nervous system. As chiropractors, what we do is remove irritation to the nervous system by adjusting the spine. The research supports the idea that the spine is not just a protective mechanism for the nervous system, but it is part of the nervous system. If we have abnormal movement or alignment in the spine, this creates irritation to that nervous system and prevents the nervous system from doing what it does best, heal, regulate, and adapt appropriately to our environment. Your health is your most important asset. Make sure that you protect it, value it, and invest in it by adding chiropractic and spinal health to your routine so your body can take on the stressors that are thrown its way. I encourage you to take action and take control of your health by contacting me and my team at Living Well Family Chiropractic. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for playing that. Awesome. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Maybe. I think I just have one slide left, or maybe two. Do you want to we'll move for you? Thank you. Box breathe. Box breathe. <laughs> Okay, guys, so really, uh, I love this quote by the late, great Dr. Fred Barge. He's all of our favorite, one of our favorites of all of the chiropractors in the room. Amazing man, mentor of ours that we never got to meet, but he has some great books, and I love this. Fear is the fire that fuels the furnace of disease, and I think truly what, it, what happened in the past couple years is fear took over and everything collapsed, and so I think we need to go out with certainty and conviction and take action when it comes to our health. Thank you guys so much.